الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. أما بعد on this 27th day of the month of the Hijjah of the year 1440 Anno Hijri coinciding with the 28th of the month of August of the year 2019 Anno Domini the topic that we have been given for discussion is the topic of knowledge of Iman fortifies against social ills and this is an interesting topic in that many of the social ills that we find within our society we find them to be rooted mentally rooted emotionally and at times we find them to have financial motivation as well yet when we take the next step and delve into the social ills a bit deeper than this even we find that quite often these social ills are actually rooted within a spiritual void within the person within the soul and if not rooted in a spiritual void then minimally spirituality can assist with correcting and healing these social ills and this is a very broad topic and we do not believe and we do not expect to be able to conquer all of this in this this is one sitting here but perhaps we can offer some thoughts offer some perspectives in order to open this conversation for it to be taken further by others and if we are going to open this topic properly we need to understand the context in which we are speaking so if we are saying that knowledge of Iman can fortify against social ills well then we need to know what this is what this Iman is that we are speaking of this Iman that is our faith this Iman that is our spirituality it is Iqrar and Tasdiq it is an affirmation and a belief so then we are affirming a belief that we have to be true within ourselves and within our hearts further this Iman that we are affirming to be true and taking it as a belief then we find that the word Iman is also rooted in the word al amin safety security peace of mind peace of heart peace of body peace of soul so then this faith that we have this spirituality that we are striving for that we are hoping to cultivate and to grow when it truly exists within our hearts and within our souls in the way that is desired then we find that we can achieve a sense of peace a sense of security peace of mind peace of soul and hopefully even peace of body by way of this belief that we are firm that we are affirming to be true and this faith that is within ourselves that is within our hearts that is within our souls then it is just that it is a belief within our heart and it is founded there and this belief that is within our hearts this spirituality that is within our heart and our soul we then would speak in conformity with it upon our tongues and as we are speaking in conformity with it upon our tongues we will strive with all our level best to act in accordance with it upon our limbs as well and the better we are with that the more accurate we are toward that we will find that our faith will be increasing as we are in a state of obedience to our Lord and if we invert this then the opposite is also true the more that we detract from this Iman 
from this faith and spirituality as we have defined it, then we will also see that it will actually decrease as we do those things that are displeasing to our Lord. May Allah fortify us and may he protect us. So then with this understanding, we want to look at our first point. And our first, point, our first point that we have here is if we are speaking about our social environment, then we are actually speaking about our interactions with ourselves and our interactions with others. And quite often, these social ills come into play because of poor interaction with ourselves or poor interaction with others. So then if this is true, then a possible solution or a possible aid in utilizing our faith to heal social ills and to fortify us from social ills would be the matter of ihsan, would be the matter of beauty, beautification, being a beautiful person and being beautiful toward the creation of our Lord being beautiful toward them in our statements, being beautiful toward them in our actions, and being beautiful toward them in a, a varying acts that are considered to be well and splendid. So then, what do we mean by this? Firstly, we believe that our Lord is the creator of all that exists. We believe that our Lord is Maliki Yomiddin and Maliki Yomiddin. We believe that our Lord is the Malik and the Malik. We believe our Lord is the owner and the king of the day of recompense, the last day, the day of resurrection. And that if this is the case in the hereafter, then this is definitely the case in the life of this world as well. So then everything belongs to our Lord and our Lord rules over all things so if this is true and it is then everything belongs to him subhanahu wa ta'ala the glorious and the exalted so if everything belongs to him if he owns everything and he is in control of everything then our iman our spirituality should bring us into a space where we only want to interact with his creation in a fashion that is pleasing to him and we will want to utilize ihsan to do so as we are familiar from the renowned hadith of jibreel alayhi salam that ihsan or beauty it is to worship allah as though you see him and if you cannot see him then you know that he sees you. So then when you are interacting with his creation, you are conscious of the fact that he knows you and sees you interacting with his creation and you want him to be pleased with you in that, minimally. And as a maxim, you will interact with his creation as though you were directly before him in your interaction with his creation. And this is Ihsan. As Ihsan, it is Wuku al-Amal, it is to perform actions in the most complete of fashions. And if you are performing an action in the most complete of fashions, and if you are speaking in the best of ways, then definitely the individual that is doing so is sincere, is a sincere individual in that given interaction with those who exist in our society. So then, by way of this, if we understand that we want the best for our society because of the fact that our society belongs to Allah, then we have understanding in our contemplation upon the words of our Lord, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, the best and the exalted, as he states, La khayra fi kathirin min najwahum. There is no excellence in many of their gatherings, especially in their secret gatherings. Except for the one that is enjoining charity or calling toward some 
good deed, some humane action that is beneficial for the creation. Al islah and bain al nas, or to bring about reconciliation amongst the people, to bring positivity to the people, to bring to bring healing to the people from whatever social challenges they may be facing. And whoever does this, intending by this the pleasure of Allah, then this person will be compensated with an immense reward. And the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is also stated, Those who are merciful, then Ar Rahman, the All Merciful, will be merciful to them. Irhamu min fil ard, yarhamkum min fil sama. So be merciful to the inhabitants of the earth. The one who is above the heavens will be merciful to you. So then, we find that one, our Lord is pleased with mercy. Two, we should be striving to achieve mercy in our interaction with the inhabitants of the earth be those inhabitants human beings be those inhabitants uh, animals be those inhabitants other vegetation or anything that exists inside of our environment within or without our, our societies so then our first point concerning Ihsan are we interacting with our Lord's creation in the best of fashions? Are we interacting with our Lord's creation in a fashion that is pleasing to Him? So we see that the premise here is a, a spiritual base. So if we are conscious of our Lord in this fashion, utilizing Ihsan, utilizing this beauty, beautifying ourselves spiritually to the point that this beauty within our spirit will manifest itself in our speech and our actions. If that is our premise, then we see how it can assist us in uh, aiding with our ills that we may have in our interaction with one another, in our interactions with one another in our societies, because of the fact that we will not want to interact with our Lord's creation in a fashion that is displeasing to our Lord and to our Creator. The next point that we would like to submit to you all is a matter of occupation, a matter of time. What are you occupying your time with? What type of work are you doing? What sciences are you involving yourself in within your life? Be those sciences uh, secular? or be those sciences spiritual? What are you occupying your time with? For more often than not, many of these social ills that are occurring, they are occurring due to the fact that we are occupying ourselves with things and utilizing our time in such a way that it is not beneficial. And we are not necessarily negating the fact that there may be causes, there may be situations that bring about the social ill itself. No denial there. However, when we look at the social ill itself, when we look at the action that results from the social ill, then quite often it is a poor use of time and a poor use of what we are occupying ourselves with. So then, in this regard, we should be striving to occupy ourselves with those things that are beneficial to ourselves as individuals and beneficial to our societies on a whole. We need to be expanding our thought, our thought process to look at matters in this fashion. So then, you in your life, what are you doing with your life? Where are you going? What is the vision that you have for your life? What is the vision that you have for your family? How do you plan on contributing to the society that we live in? How do you plan on 
leaving this planet in this realm that we call Earth better off than the way that you came into it. This should be something that is on the mind of the Muslim. For the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has stated, Ihras ala man yanfa'ak wasta'in billah wa la ta'ajaz. Focus on what is beneficial to you. Seek the aid of Allah and do not be a person that is incapable. So let's examine this ever so briefly. Focus on what is beneficial to you. This is an order from our Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if we believe in our Messenger, والسلام, then we will strive to implement what he has directed us toward. For he is only directing us toward something that is beneficial for us as individuals and or beneficial for our societies as a holistic benefit or as a partial benefit yet that partial that is present would still greatly outweigh whenever whatever negative may be present so he is only directing us towards that which is good for us so we should strive to do so if we believe in our messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and if we are sunni yun in truth and if we are those who strive to implement the sunnah in truth and to align our lives with the way that he lived his life sallallahu alaihi wasallam so then we focus on that which is beneficial beneficial in what, in what way beneficial in the dunya and the akhirah what is beneficial to you in this life and what is beneficial to you in the hereafter and the only way to truly come to this conclusion of what is beneficial to you in this life and in the hereafter is if you give thought to your life if you give thought to what is taking place in the society that you live in what do you want your life to be tomorrow what has your life been in your past what is your life like today in your present and what do you want your life to be tomorrow and what is your society like around you in that same fashion past present and future and what would you like your impact to be upon that these are questions that we must ask in order to develop some vision for ourselves we can't be just simply wandering without rhyme or reason without purpose or direction for our faith is it is premised upon purpose. And I have neither created the jinn nor humanity except for the express intent of my worship alone. So then we worship our Lord and we worship our Lord through our ritual acts of worship. But also for the Muslim, our worship is also how we are interacting with the society that we live in beginning with ourselves first as individuals how are we interacting with ourselves in the society that we live in and how are we interacting with others in the society that we live in be it our families our mothers our fathers be it our aunts and uncles be it our brothers and sisters be it our children be it our neighbors be it those who we interact with that are muslim that are non-muslim be it in the places of our worship or be it in our workplaces or be it in the places where we entertain ourselves or the places where we make our purchases in the market space we must be conscious of this as the saying goes al mu'min da'iman yaqidha the person of iman the person of spirituality is consistently conscious stay woke so then Focus on what is beneficial to you in this life and in the hereafter. And whilst you are focused on that and putting that plan together and seeking to effectuate that plan so that you can bring the vision that you have for yourself to fruition, you will also seek the aid of Allah in that regard. For it is only through the aid of our Lord that we're, that we're able to achieve anything that we achieve. For this reason, Allah stated in the Fatiha, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. You alone do we worship and in you alone do we seek aid. For worship here is mentioned in general and then a specific act of worship is mentioned directly after as is from the styles of the Quran. And 
we find here that had our Lord willed, he could have mentioned any specific act of worship that he so willed to mention. He could have mentioned prayer. He could have mentioned fasting. He could have mentioned uh, the annual almsgiving that we call zakat. He could have mentioned the pilgrimage to Mecca that we call Hajj. could have mentioned anything. Yet he mentioned isti'ana, seeking his aid. Why so? Because it is impossible to perform any action except that he aided you, aided me, aided us in the achievement of that action. We can't give any alms if he doesn't assist us in attaining the alms to give. We cannot pray unless he aids us in that. We cannot be beneficial to ourselves or others in this life or in the hereafter unless he aids us in that. So then it is as though by his mentioning isti'ana, by his mentioning seeking aid, then under that umbrella of seeking aid, it is as though he has mentioned all acts in entirety, be they acts of worship or be they other than that. So in order to do what is beneficial for yourself in this life and in hereafter, in order to implement this order of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you must be seeking the aid of Allah to do so. Further, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam states, Wala ta'jaz. Don't be a person that is feeble. Don't be a person that is weak. Don't be a person that is incapable. Be a person of ability. Be a person of skill. Be a person of education. Be a person of value. This is what we understand here. For we do know that the Messenger of Allah has stated, المؤمن القوي خير من المؤمن الضعيف وفي كل خير. The strong person of iman, the strong person of faith, the strong person of spirituality is better than the person that is weak in their spirituality. Yet in the two of them, there is still excellence. So no denial to the merit of the person who is weak in his or her spirituality. There is still merit that is there due to the existence of the spirituality itself. Yet, we as Muslims, we are people that we strive for ihsan. We strive for beauty. We strive for that which is best. So then, in this regard, we want to do what is best. And it is as Ali, radiallahu anhu, as he has mentioned, qimatu uh, kulli imri'in ma yuhsinuhu. The value of every human being is that which he or she excels in. So then, let us Don't be incapable. Don't be uneducated. Don't lack ability. Rather, develop your skill sets. Develop your ability. Develop your education. Develop your value as a human being, regardless of where you are at today. You can always achieve more tomorrow. These are golden words from a messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If we would simply just embody them, if we would simply just reflect upon them, then we would see that it is not from our faith to to be lazy. It's, it's not from our faith to not do. It's not from our faith to not produce. And when we look at certain social ills that exist within our society we see that they can come from laziness. They can come from not doing. They come from not producing. They come from giving up hope. They, they come from allowing others to place a value on us that our Lord has not stipulated for us. So then, if others devalue us, then that should not be of the greatest concern to us. Rather, we should be focused on how our Lord views us because as is in the affair of Ihsan in the affair of beauty we strive to worship our Lord as though we can see him and we know that he sees us so we are most concerned with with how our Lord views us and now how others in society view us or may seek to devalue us if that is what others in society are doing and we we come to our our next point here that we can utilize our iman, that we can utilize our faith, uh, our spirituality to, to aid us in fortifying against these social ills. 
that exists. And that is for the believer to frequent the remembrance of Allah, to be in a state of subhanallah, glory be to Allah, alhamdulillah, praise belongs to Allah, la ilaha illallah, there is none deserved of worship save Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater than anything and everything that exists, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, there is neither might nor power save by Allah, subhanallah hiu bihamdihi, subhanallah al -azim. glory be to Allah and by his praise, glory be to Allah the, the magnificent, being in this state, moistening our tongues with the remembrance of Allah, frequenting that, having the remembrance of Allah within our hearts, reflecting upon these words, not just simply iterating them upon our tongues, but reflecting upon their meanings within ourselves, contemplating upon our Lord's creation, being near to his book, being near to the Quran, as the Quran is the greatest remembrance of Allah, being in this space, frequenting it, it is a means of bringing tranquility to the soul, being at rest, achieving peace, achieving that peace of mind, that peace of soul, and striving for that peace of body that we can come into when we embody Iman, when we embody our spirituality. For our Lord has stated, Allah bi dhikrillah tatama'in al qulub Certainly it is only by the remembrance of Allah that the hearts find peace, that the hearts find tranquility. So then it is our Iman, it is our frequent remembrance of our Lord, it is living in a state of God consciousness that we can achieve tranquility. For there are many social ills that are actually impacted by anxiety and are living in a state of anxiety. So then an assistant to that state of anxiety in order to control it or hopefully to suppress it or even more hopefully to heal it, we would utilize the remembrance of Allah as a measure to achieve that. So then we are utilizing our spirituality medicinally to aid us mentally and aid us emotionally. We utilize our spirituality to aid ourselves concerning our mental state and aid ourselves concerning our emotional state. And as we level ourselves out in our emotional state and our mental state, then we would hope and we would strive for this to have impact upon our, our physical state as well. The, the next item that we would like to mention is one of perspective. Is the glass full or is the glass half empty? And what do we mean by that? Well, we should be a people of felicity. We should be a people of positivity. For this is in part what it means to have good character. As you know, that good character is from the characteristics that set Islam apart from other walks of life and makes it unique in that regard. From good character is taking the good that you have within yourself and extending it to yourself and to other than yourself. Good character, it is whatever harm that you have within yourself, then you strive to not let that harm impact yourself or impact others. Good character, you see, it is to have a cheerful count a countenance, to be in a state, a state of felicity, as Abdullah bin Mubarak, may Allah bestow mercy upon his soul, has, has mentioned. So then, with this understanding, we want to be people who reflect upon the blessings that Allah has bestowed upon us. We want to be people that even more so will speak to the blessings that our Lord has bestowed upon us. Uh, we want to be people that utilize speaking about the blessings of our Lord as a means of gratitude to our Lord. So whatever blessings, whatever good that we have in our lives, however large or however small, we want to speak to those things. 
whether they be whether they be external or whether they be internal blessings that we can be grateful for and we utilize these blessings in order to increase in obedience to our lord and that is what gratitude is that is the nature of gratitude so we speak about them and as for the blessings of your lord speak about them proclaim them and as the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned التحدث بنعمة الله شكرا وتركها كفرا To speak about the blessings of Allah is gratitude And to leave this off, to not do this, is ingratitude And here, we are not saying that we speak about the blessings of Allah that he has bestowed upon us in such a fashion That we are showing hubris That we are thinking or showing that we are, are, are better than someone else no we're not saying this at all we practice this with all humility that out of everyone in our Lord's existence that he has chosen us to give us this particular blessing out of his favor when he did not have to and when we were, when we were quite undeserving of it when we look at how short of the mark that we are in fulfilling the obligations and then when we fulfill the obligations do we fulfill them in the best of ways Look at the misgivings that we have. How many sins are we carrying? Yet our Lord still grants us this and grants us that and blesses us, blesses us with this and answers our supplication for that. So then we acknowledge this in front of our Lord, in front of his creation, and we speak about them in order to show our gratitude to our Lord. And this is something that will bring us in a state of, of upliftment, in a state of positivity. For quite often, many of the social ills that we are facing, they, they bring about sadness. They, they bring about despair. They bring about nasty attitude. They, they bring about just being downed. They bring about, as we stated earlier, anxiety. And we are in need of positivity to combat these things. Because once the person enters into a state of just giving up hope, to a state of there is no other way, to a state of just sadness, to a state of depression, then this can bring about actions that are not pleasing to Allah because the person thinks, well, what else do I have to lose? There's no other way for me to achieve my goals in life or I won't be able to achieve my goals in life. So I might as well just give up and harm myself and harm others or do things that are not beneficial to myself or do things that are not beneficial to others. And standing further on this conversation concerning uh, perception, and, and how we are looking to what is occurring within our lives, in the lives of others, in the societies that we live in. That matter of is the glass half full or is it half empty? We want to look at prophetic tradition here. We want to look at another hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here. And this is in a statement as he says, Unduru ila min huwa asfalu minkum wa la tanduru ila min huwa fawqakum. Look to those who are of a lower stature than yourself and do not look to those that are of a higher stature than yourself فَنَهُ أَجْدَرْ إِنْ لَا تَزْدِرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ for this is more becoming for you so that you can acknowledge and be grateful for the blessing of Allah that He has bestowed upon you what does this prophetic tradition mean? Well, firstly, this is speaking in context of the worldly life and not speaking in context of the affairs of the, of the hereafter. For when it comes to the affairs of the hereafter, we do look to those that have achieved more than us. We do look to those who have uh, a higher stature than ourselves in spirituality, in iman, in faith in taqwa, in God consciousness. And we do this in order to take them as an example to emulate them so that we can achieve what they have achieved. And at the forefront of all of this, of course, is the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For certainly within the Messenger of Allah, there is a superb example to emulate. 
Yet here, this prophetic tradition, it is speaking about in worldly affairs, worldly affairs. So then when it comes to worldly affairs, we are looking to those who have less than us and not looking to those who have more than us. For if we look to those who have more than us, and when we say is more, quite often, or more than not, it is different more than it is more. However, when we look at when we look to those who have more than us, then it makes it cloudy. It makes it difficult for us to recognize the blessings that our Lord has bestowed upon us because we're looking to those who we perceive as having more than us or different than us. So an individual has a certain type of car. So because you don't have a certain type of vehicle, this then clouds your judgment and being grateful to the fact that you do have a vehicle and the in the vehicle that you do have and or you have transportation and the mode of transportation that you do have or having access to transportation because there are those who do not so then we look to those who have less when it comes to worldly affairs we look to those that may have a lesser grade of transportation a or have no transportation at all or their access to transport transportation is less than ours so that we can be grateful for the transportation that we have and of course we mention this solely as example for this can be drawn for any measure in life in our world uh it can be education it can be the 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 home that we have it can be uh the amount of wealth and property that we have acquired it could be the position the stature in society that we hold you can take this example and run it across everything that it is that exists inside of the life of this world look or rather uh yes look to those who have less than you and do not look to those who have more than you so that it doesn't cloud your judgment and block you from your uh being grateful to your lord for the blessing that he's bestowed upon you and as we stated earlier when you are in a state of gratitude to your lord this brings you into a state of positivity a state of happiness a state of felicity and when you are happy then this can assist with the social ills that exist in our society for many of these social ills come from a place that is the opposite of happiness we have people that will seek out pleasure in order to achieve happiness not recognizing the fact that pleasure is actually something that is distinct from happiness and pleasure will not necessarily allow you to achieve happiness and this is interesting when we contemplate upon the words of Ibn Qayyim may Allah bestow mercy upon his soul when he mentioned كيف يكون عاقلا من باع الجنة بشهوة ساعة how can a person be considered intelligent who would sell his paradise for the spur of the moment you see sell this paradise for a desire within the spur of the moment and this spur of the moment moment it is a moment of pleasure but it is not actually happiness because the person has to continue to repeat this action over and over again in order to enter into that state of pleasure and still not achieve happiness necessarily so then your gratitude to your Lord can bring you into a space of happiness regardless of what you have or what you do not have because you are grateful for that which you do have. And we have just a couple of more points to mention before we close uh, for today. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he stated, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مِنْ أَسْلَمَ وَرِزِقَ كَثَّافٍ وَقِنْعَهُ اللَّهُ بِمَا آتَى one is successful who has achieved Islam. Just by achieving Islam itself, that is a measure of success. Success in this life and the hereafter. And this person is granted a sufficiency for their needs in this life. And this is what we are striving for in order to assist us in healing, uh, in healing the ills of the society and in also fortifying us from those ills within the society. We want sufficiency. So what do we mean by that? You have enough for yourself to be comfortable. So you are comfortable in your quality of life. So you do not necessarily have uh, 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 overabundance to the point that that overabundance 
distracts you from your purpose of life, distracts you from the worship of your Lord, but you have enough where you are comfortable and you do not, you do not, not have enough to the extent that you are solely just worried about survival. What am I going to eat today? What clothes am I going to be able to put on my back today? Will I have shelter today? No, you're beyond that. So you have a comfortable lifestyle. This is what the Muslim is striving for. So you've been granted a sufficiency by Allah. So you're comfortable. And when you're comfortable, you have peace of mind, peace of heart, peace of spirit, peace of body. So then you can fulfill the obligations of your Lord, fulfill the recommendations of your Lord, abstain from what your Lord is displeased with because of the fact that you are fortified in your own life and you have a comfortable quality of life. And once you have that, quant that comfortable quality of life, then you are content with that. And you are content with what your Lord has granted to you. So then this is the, the mindset that we strive for. And of course, we strive for that mindset in which the glass is half full and not being half empty. Uh, there are several matters here, but unfortunately, we, it looks like we are running short on our time here. So we'll mention a, a few items ever so briefly. Next, we have the matter of placing our tawakkul upon Allah, placing our trust in, a, in, in our reliance upon Allah. Uh, our hearts within ourselves we are recognizing that our Lord is in control of all of the affairs that our Lord uh, wants the best for us that our Lord only decrees what is best for this universe so then we trust our Lord with regards to that we have reliance upon our Lord with regards to that with as our Lord has stated and upon Allah place your trust if you are really people of Iman if you are really people of spirituality so then your faith is adjoined with your reliance that exists within your heart upon your Lord so then the means that your Lord has provided to you within your life in order to achieve the goals you are striving for within your life you exhaust the means that he has provided for you in whatever social ills that exist and or your challenge with you utilize those means he's provided for you for when you do that, you will find that he will be sufficient for you. As our Lord has stated, And whoever placed their trust upon Allah, he will be sufficient for him. And this sufficiency as a reward for an act of worship has been relegated for tawakkul specifically. And we don't find this for any other act of worship that exists within our faith. This is purely for tawakkul. So then, whatever social ills we are challenged with, our Lord has already given us the means to overcome them. We just have to look to the means that he has provided for us in our lives, which may be different for what other people have been provided for in their lives, and you utilize the means he has granted to us. And after we have exhausted those means, then we turn the remainder of the affair over to our Lord, and we are pleased with that, and we know that our Lord is sufficient for us. Further, we look to the seerah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and we look to the lives of the companions for historical context. For it is the seerah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, it is the lives of the companions anhum, may Allah be pleased with them that brings context to the verses and the ahadith that we are practicing in our lives. The challenges that we have faced or that we are facing Many of them are not different challenges than the challenges that existed during the time of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the companions as they as they went through that. And we could give examples of this, but we know that you're familiar. So then think about that. So then how did they get through the challenges the, the uh, of, of the societal ills that they faced during their day? How were they successful? And how do they utilize spirituality in order to achieve that? And the only way to delve into this is if you are near to the biographical account of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You take the time to read it, to understand it, to compare it to the Quran and the Sunnah for context. To so look in your life and how you can find a solution in your life. Look to the lives of the companions at large 
and look at what they did in their lives to to fortify themselves from and or to heal the social ills that existed within the societies of their day. The last point that we have to mention for you all, it is the uh, mention of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as he stated, Antum a'lam bi umuri dunyakum. You are more knowledgeable concerning the affairs of your worldly life. So then with all that we have mentioned, we do not negate the reality that through secular sciences as well, this can aid us with regards to uh, social ills. We don't negate that and we utilize it as was the case with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He didn't negate secular benefit. He didn't negate secular sciences as is the case in this hadith with the pollination of the, of the date palm trees. And he gave a suggestion, uh, a worldly suggestion found to be an error. And then he told them that you all are more knowledgeable concerning your worldly affairs. So then we utilize our secular knowledge to assist us. And we utilize uh, our knowledge of psychology, our, 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 our knowledge in, in social work, our knowledge in science, our, our knowledge in whatever areas secularly that can assist us with the social ills that we have today. We hope that we have shared some words today that um, are beneficial to ourselves and to others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the glorious and the exalted, that he grants us sincerity and that he makes us successful in utilizing our knowledge of Iman, utilizing our knowledge of spirituality to fortify ourselves from social ills. Hadha wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu ala muhammad.